Hello and thanks for joining me for another Airbrush Asylum video. In today's video, I am going to unbox the GSI Mr. Hobby Double Action Gravity Feed Airbrush. We're going to check that out and I want to say thank you to Spray Gunner for sending this out to me to give it a whirl. I will be doing some other videos featuring this particular airbrush up against other brands as well as creating some artwork with it. But for today's video, it's going to be purely unboxing. I will test it with some paint. So they were kind enough to send me some uh, Chroma Air, which I will utilize in another video when I create the artwork. But for today's video, I'm just going to run with some paint that I've already got pre-mixed. So let's get into the unboxing right now. Okay, so let's take a look at the airbrush. Looks pretty cool. Uh, first and foremost, we'll have a look at the uh, packaging. So obviously the contents, you get the airbrush, it's always handy. A connector for the hose, so that's pretty good that you're getting a hose with it. Um, so I'll take a look at that in a minute. And obviously the little uh, nozzle removal tool. Uh, some more info on other products on the side. And then um, got the airbrush pictured on the back again. Okay, so what I can understand from the back here, it's a 0.18 mil. It's got a 10 cc cup, so 10 mil of um, capacity in the uh, cup there. And uh, just some other little bits and pieces and features. So let's get her open. So we'll get the cardboard sleeve out. Comes with a bit of a, oh, that's, okay. I see what's going on. That's the film from that. And then we've got some, instructions now this airbrush is made in japan so i'm very excited to try it out as you know things made in japan are usually really good so just got a bit of an exploded diagram there so again this model is the ps770 now some little test patterns that are just digital so not hand done on this one this one also comes with a mac valve so yeah, just some plenty of information there. Get rid of that. And this one is, okay, this is just a basic how-to. You know, how to clean, how to pull it apart, that sort of thing. Be handy if I could read Japanese, but you get the idea. Right, so that's the box. Okay, so it comes in a plastic case. And let's get it out. So let's pull everything out so I can show you. So we've got the hose. That's obviously just your padding. You can stick that back in there. And we've got the little tool. So you can see the tool, the hose. Right, so the hose has a much smaller end than I'm normally used to. So that obviously screws directly onto here and then you can connect that up to another uh, compressor, so another air source. I'm not going to um, use this one because that's not going to fit my connector. So let's just go ahead and unscrew that and we can pop that back in here. So it looks to me as though it's got the standard fitting there so that will fit my Iwata hose which is great. So we'll go and go ahead and hook it up soon. Okay, so it does have a nice weight to it. Seems a bit heavier than uh, the majority of airbrushes that I've used, but uh, let's go pop it on the scales and see what the exact weight comes in at. Just get this out of the way. Okay, so we'll take off the uh, rubber there. Not that it's gonna make that much of a difference, but it'll give us a more accurate weight. So there you go between, well, 110 grams on that one so for anyone that's interested okay so let's just take a closer look at the uh, the design of the brush so you'll see the crown cap there I imagine you can now uh, remove that and paint without that on so I'll give that a go later when I put some paint in this you have the Mac valve Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know what uh, what the benefits of a Mac valve are, uh, the what you can do is you keep the pressure on your compressor set and that will travel into your brush as normal. So let's just say you've got it at 30 PSI. So then what you do is you wind that in, right? So this little adjustment there. And the more you wind it in, 
it will um, reduce that pressure right down and allow you to get really, really fine detail if you over thin your paint, okay? Okay, so the brush itself has a really nice look to it. You can see it's sort of that anodized appearance. A few of the interesting features, which I'm not too sure. I think they're more cosmetic. We've got that little cut out there uh, just behind the color cup. And you've got some um, basically little holes through the trigger. That's interesting. So I can't imagine that they would have really serve any purpose. Maybe just knock a bit of the weight off it. You've got a bit of uh, ribbing on the back handle there. That's, uh, that's not a bad thing because when you are holding it, that could just um, provide a bit more sort of uh, grip. And we can see the other side of the brush here. So the brand's written on there with the model number and the size of the setup. Whereas on this side, it is just nice and plain. So nice looking brush. I do like how it's got the black accents. It's a nice little touch there and there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a closer look and pull it apart. So obviously that's where your paint goes. So I'm happy to see that the ribbing is just a, a detail there. It's not actually on the inside of the cup because that would be very annoying when you clean it. So the cup is smooth. Obviously got your breather hole in the top of the cap as with all gravity feed airbrushes. And we'll remove that. We will remove the handle. Just unscrew that. Take the needle out. And you can see how fine that needle is. So that's your 0.18 mil needle. Okay, remove this. Okay, so we're also going to remove this part here. So you can see that sits within there. So I'm pretty sure that should unscrew as well. And it does, which is not, we don't really need to do that to pull it apart like that, but I will for the purpose of this video. So that's basically just controlling your trigger tension. So that's basically the needle guide with the spring. I can take it all apart, pull the trigger out. Okay, so the trigger is like so. So it doesn't have that little dangly bit that you have to try and fit into the hole. We can unscrew the bottom in a second. Now let's remove the head assembly and reveal the fluid nozzle. So we have the air cap. You can see that that is our fluid nozzle. Okay, so let's go ahead and unscrew that one. So very carefully put the tool on there and go anti-clockwise and then just uh, remove the rest of it with your finger. You'll see that there's a bit of uh, red around the nozzle there. So that's basically just the sealant that they put on from the factory. So if that ever does leak again, for whatever reason, you can utilize a bit of beeswax on there to seal it up as well. And you can see that's all nicely machined in there. See if this comes off. Okay, so loosen this now so I can unscrew this part of the airbrush as well. See that little seal in there. And you've got three air holes, which is nice. So let's go ahead and remove the plunger assembly. Loosen so we can now unscrew this. Notice we have another a seal there. And that would be the little pin for the trigger. I'm just going to carefully utilize the back of this needle to pop that out. That has, uh, that's what's dropped out. So that's what you press down on when you push down for air on the uh, trigger. 
which in turn presses that down and then allows the air to flow through to your airbrush. Now, this can be removed as well. So let's get a tool for that. Okay, so we're gonna carefully remove the bottom of that. So just utilizing this tool here. So those two prongs will sit on that and then you unscrew very carefully. And watch out, that little spring will want to jump out and there's your little pin. So that's how you replace a, a regular spring and change it over to a soft spring as well, but that can be another video. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at all the parts. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put her all back together. So we'll start off with the plunger assembly, the probably the most difficult part. We need to stick that pin back in there, like so, followed by the spring. And then this little guy will get our tool, sit him on the tool like so, line that hole up and then find the thread and tighten him back up again until it's snug so you don't have to force it and to check you just press down everything's working nicely now I'm going to just screw that on by hand now well, let's put the uh, head assembly back together so I'm just gonna screw everything together by hand and fire her up and make sure that it's all working properly without any leaks. So we've got that on. Now with the nozzle, carefully place it in there and sort of move anti-clockwise to find the thread and then wind it in once you've found the thread. So then using this very carefully, there are other nozzle wrenches that you can use that fit over the front, which is what I do prefer. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'll use the one that comes in the kit. Just carefully tighten it and that's it. All right, you do not want to over tighten it. If you do, you can snap that thread and then you basically have to extract the uh, broken thread and um, put in a new nozzle, which can be expensive. You don't want to do that. Okay, so we'll sit that back on, followed by the air cap. Like I said, I very rarely have that on when I'm spraying. Okay, so before putting the trigger back in, we need to put this little piece back into that little hole. So usually I've got some tweezers that make life a lot easier, but I'm going to just try and do this without to show you guys how to go about it. So I just dropped it in there. And if you can see, it's sort of uh, sitting on an angle and now I'm just utilizing the needle. I'm just gonna pop that back in like so. All right, so you can do it without tweezers. It's a lot easier if you do have tweezers. You can literally just drop it straight in the correct space. So with the trigger, you'll notice that it has that little notch taken out of the back of it so that just signifies that that goes towards the back of the airbrush. So with this style of trigger, you just sit it in like so, give it a twist, pop it down, and you should feel action if everything has been replaced correctly. The next thing we wanna do is put this back on. So this sits up against the trigger, right? So it goes in like so with your spring, and then this little guy will screw back on just to hold that into place. And then we utilize this and that screws into here. And 
and then we can click that back on there. Okay, so what this does is it adjusts the trigger tension. So basically it'll compress or decompress the spring. So you wind it in and that's going to make the trigger a lot tighter. It'll give it a much tighter throw. And if you want a looser action, you just wind that out and that's gonna give you a smoother action. I kind of like it a bit looser, but just personal preference. So next thing is we are going to reinsert the needle. Now make sure that this isn't tight. If this is tight, you're not gonna be able to push the needle in as that there closes the clamps which grab hold of the needle, okay? So you need to keep that loose. So even when you're cleaning your brush and you're flushing through the back here, you, um, you make sure that you keep that loose. All right, so now to reinsert the needle, do so like this, push it all the way forward. Don't smash it through, like don't jam it. You could damage the uh, fluid nozzle. So just be nice and gentle until you feel it that it can't go any further and then just give it a light little push, only a little bit of pressure just to seat the needle and you're done. Now remember, you need to re-tighten this because as I just mentioned earlier, that's what holds the needle into place. And if you want to test it, you can see I'm pulling back and the needle is moving back and forth. If that's loose, it's not going to do anything, all right? And you're going to put paint in there and wonder why when you're pulling back for paint, nothing's happening, all right? So tighten that up. Now, the handle goes back on. And that's how it sits. Usually I overturn, like I over tighten these so that this part sits here as I find that when it's like this, sometimes it'll catch, but that's just with my hands. So everyone's different. All right, so I prefer to tighten it another quarter turn. Um, for this purpose, I won't bother doing that. I'll just see how it performs as is. Now this little dial on the back, uh, basically you can just set how much you pull back. So you can set it, say, on the four, and you'll notice that I'm not getting the full pullback, right? And then you can wind it out, and you're going to get more action. But you can see there that the trigger is stopping, okay? If I wind it all the way out, which is the way I like to airbrush, you've got full control, all right? When I say full control, it just means you've got the maximum to the minimum, whereas this is just to help you out when you're first starting off, it actually does give you a bit more control um, because you can set it so that if you want to replicate a particular shadow or the amount of paint that you are applying, then you can utilize this, set it on any of those numbers, and that will stop the trigger from moving all the way into the uh, full paint position. All right, and then obviously the air cap goes back on. The other little thing they give you is a little rubber cap, which is fantastic just to protect it. So if you drop it, it's always good to have that on, all right? And obviously to have that on as well. But I find with the rubber caps, when I'm not painting, I like to have them protecting the needle which is exposed when I'm using it. Okay, so let's go get some paint in this brush and give it a go. So first and foremost, I'm just gonna put a little bit of reducer in there first. We'll hook her up a little, because uh, I run the quick connect. I have a little quick connect here, the other end. So the male adapter, which I'm just screwing on the bottom there. And we're gonna hook that up now, like so. And we have action. So you can see the spray of just that reducer. That's full throttle. And you can wind that in or out. I've got it set at about 40 psi, so when I wind it out, reasonable amount of spray. And then if I wind it right in, you'll see I'm getting less mist when I'm pulling back. And you can hear the air pressure change, all right? So I'll just keep it at that at the moment. We'll pop some paint in there and give her a whirl. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a bit of Trident paint just to try this out as I'm familiar with it. And we're just gonna drop some paint in there. I will remove the air cap. 
So now I've got to be aware and careful that the uh, needle is exposed. I'm just going to put my finger over the front to bubble back just to mix that reducer up in the cup. Pop our lid back on and I'm ready to go. Let's get some paper and give it a go. Okay, so just uh, first action feels really nice. Sprays extremely smooth. So this is uh, spraying at a further distance. Let's go in and do some finer details with it. Now this is obviously straight out of the box, I haven't done anything to it. First time I've ever used this particular airbrush. Um, usually with airbrushes I find that as you use them more they actually perform better over time. It's kind of like you're wearing it in a little bit. Um, but I mean this one straight out of the box is, is doing you know great things. Let's just try and do some heavier lines. Now obviously I could um, thin the paint out even more if I wanted to. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a bit more reducer in the top of this. Really thin it out. Again, finger over the front to mix it. Spray it out a couple of times. And now we're ready to rock. Okay, so just reduce that down a little bit. We'll run it at the same pressure at the moment and just clear that nozzle out. You can see it's running really nicely. And now we're gonna wind it in and see if we can go even finer. We can see now it is flowing through. I'm getting closer to my optimal thinning which is 70% reducer 30% paint that's what I like to paint with see if I can go and wind that in a bit more and get that to flow through so it's having a bit of trouble now so that's telling me that I need to thin it out more I'm going to go ahead and do that right now okay so a lot more reducer so you'll see really smooth if I'm going heavy You'll notice it is a lot thinner. But that's okay. It's what we want because I want to test the uh, the Mac valve. So let's go wind that in. All right, wind it right down. And wow, there you go. It's dotting a bit there, but. Let's just, okay, that's better. See how fine we can go. So there you have it, nice and fine. Just a closer look at that, uh, those finer details. See my finger there, so nice and tiny. Okay, so here we have just a few shots close up of the brush. So thanks for joining me for another video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If this is the first time to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. Tap on that bell icon, that'll notify you every time I put out new content. And I look forward to bringing you more videos featuring this airbrush. It's definitely uh, worked nicely straight out of the box. So I look forward to uh, creating some art with it very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now.